Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Whilst brainstorming ideas for new videos, I often look over old maps to look for any specific curiosities and until now I've never really paid much attention to the North Pole, because this part of the planet, if not covered in water, would surely have been covered with ice. Unlike the South Polar region, geologically speaking there is no continental landmass under the North Pole, and Google Earth shows this in some level of detail. So why then, on 16th century maps of the world, do we see a very specific land formation north of Greenland, in exactly the position of the North Pole? I try to find all of the maps that feature this formation, and so far I have counted seven, the most famous being the various incarnations of the Gerardus Mercator map of the 16th century. This mysterious landmass ties in with the Greek mythological account of the Hyperboreans, a race of giants who lived beyond the North Wind. Their land was supposed to be perfect, with the sun shining 24 hours a day, which therefore suggests they lived in the Arctic Circle. Of course the existence of Hyperborea is looked on by academia as pure mythology, and as we can see on Google Earth, there is certainly no landmass at the North Pole. The earliest source for Hyperborea was written in histories by Herodotus, and it dates back to 450 BC, although he also states that Homer talked about the landmass in his lost work titled Epigone. Herodotus also quotes the 7th century BC poet Aristius, who wrote about the Hyperboreans in a now lost poem called Arimaspia. Other historians from the time of Herodotus also recorded Hyperborea in their work, including Pindar and Hellenicius of Lesbos, and if I've learned anything over the past couple of years, it's that we should not underestimate the accuracy of the writings of Herodotus. The Hyperboreans were believed to live beyond the snowy Riffian mountains, which are believed to be mountains in the north of Europe or Asia. Pomponius Mela placed the mountains in the Arctic Circle. Most therefore believe that Hyperborea was in this region. There are many other sources for Hyperborea, and just as many interpretations about where the landmass actually is. Some say it was Great Britain, an idea first spoken about by Hecatius of Abdera in the 4th century BC. Ptolemy and Marcion of Heraclea place Hyperborea in the North Sea, a sea they called the Hyperborean Ocean. This is a particularly interesting idea, as we know for a fact that the North Sea was once dry land after the Ice Age, although its description doesn't quite tie in with the account by Herodotus. Known as Doggerland, the last surviving piece of this now lost land, known as Dogger Bank, only vanished around 4000 BC. Some say part of it was still poking through the ocean in the early Neolithic phase of British history. Some say that Hyperborea is the island of Lewis, others say Siberia, Scandinavia or Greenland, but most think it never existed at all. So, the physical existence of Hyperborea is disputed, and even those that believe it existed cannot agree on its location. Which brings us to the point of this video, which is the landmass shown in the 16th century maps that occupies the Arctic Circle. Could this be the lost land of Hyperborea? On this 1570 map of the world, we see an Arctic continent that is labelled Terra Septentrionalis Incognita, which means unknown northern land, and this ties in with the Mercator map, which features the North Pole from a different perspective. Here is the full Mercator map, which is actually made by Italian Amerigo Vespucci, as well as Gerardus Mercator. And in the bottom left hand corner, it shows us the bizarre circular polar landmass and its relationship to the other continents. Here we see a landmass in the north on the 1587 Ortelius Typus Orbis Terranium map, which also appears on a Berno Montes world map created in the same year. And here it is again on another Ortelius map of 1570. Here is possibly the oldest depiction of the polar landmass on the 1492 Martin of Bohemia globe, and apparently it is based on the work of Ptolemy, but with additional information by Marco Polo, John Mandeville and Diogo Gomez. So, can we get any more information from the cartographers themselves? As shown, Mercator shows the North Pole being a large rock, surrounded by four mountainous islands, which are separated by four major rivers. Back in 1577, Mercator wrote to John Dee, the English mathematician, to explain his map, saying, In the midst of the four countries is a whirlpool, into which there empty these four indrawing seas which divide the north, and the water rushes round and descends into the earth, just as if one were pouring it through a filter funnel. It is four degrees wide on every side of the pole, that is to say, eight degrees altogether, except that right under the pole there lies a bare rock in the midst of the sea. 
Its circumference is almost 33 French miles, and it is all of magnetic stone. This is word for word everything that I copied out of this author years ago. So, Makata was using source material, which was the work of Jacobus Canoyan of Herzogenbusch to be exact. He himself referenced the work titled Inventio Fortunata, a now lost 14th century resource for later cartographers that details the voyages of a monk from Oxford who travelled extensively in the north. This work apparently itself references a far older and now lost work called Geste Arthori. In 1606, Jodius Hondius republished the Makata map and included the newly discovered islands around the Barrett Sea, the most famous of which is a group of islands known today as Svalbard. The addition of these islands firmly places the unknown landmass of Makata at today's North Polar Sea region. But by 1636, all traces of Makata's four countries, Central Polar Rock and Whirlpool Sea, ceased to exist on world maps, as polar exploration increased northwards from Svalbard, and therefore the source materials used by Makata became redundant. The truth is there was never any land at the North Pole. Today, the area of the North Pole is a series of ocean ridges and troughs, with no sign of the fabled Hyperborea or the lost landmass of Makata. Still, the amount of high quality data and imaging over this region of the world is lacking, but scientific mapping and sediment analysis has taken place, and it shows that there wasn't any kind of modern catastrophe, as sedimentation goes back as far as the Cretaceous period. But was the source material used by Makata really all wrong? I still didn't think this study felt complete, and then I finally came across this 1522 map by Laurent Fries, and we can see a large circular piece of land above Europe with a hole in the middle. Although smaller, I've no doubt that this is one and the same as the Makata Polar Landmass. With a little digging, I found that it was based on the 1513 map by German cartographer Martin Waldseemuller. Zooming in, and what this map clearly shows is Scandinavia. As both of these maps came before the Makata map, I think what we find by the late 16th century is a convergence of historical observations by seafaring cartographers, older maps, new discoveries, as well as historic writings, which, added together, ended up like a dog's dinner by the time that Makata made his map, which I think actually shows two Scandinavias. Makata had accidentally placed Scandinavia of the Martin Waldseemuller map as the North Pole landmass described by his sources. And then when the new islands around the Barrett Sea were discovered, they were placed south of this land when they should have been placed in the north. I'm not surprised that the polar landmass vanished by 1636, because although this has fueled internet speculation of a polar landmass conspiracy and evidence for Hyperborea, I think all we are looking at is a cartographical error. Maybe Hyperborea did really exist, maybe it was Britain, Siberia, Doggerland or Scandinavia, but maybe it was just a fairy tale. It is written that Apollo, the solar sun and youthful aspect of Zeus, was believed by a dedicated cult to leave Hellas once a year and go far to the north to visit Hyperborea. This is likely to be another ancient religious account of the sun leaving for winter, and the myth probably explained why the sun's light was minimal during winter, because Apollo was far away in Hyperborea. The icy northern horizon and the origins of the cold north wind means the legend of Hyperborea in the uncharted North Pole would have been a believable myth to explain the annual icy cold winter and the lack of sunlight. Lost islands and continents are prominent in ancient myths and legends from a number of different cultures and civilizations. Aside from Hyperborea, the most famous of course is Atlantis, of which there is much discussion about its location, but most agree that it did once exist. I recently made a video on the lost island of High Brazil off the coast of Ireland, and I do believe that in recent history, this island was above the water. Hyperborea is another lost land that often generates much discussion, but did it really exist? At this point, I just don't know. All this and more I will be discussing in a future video, but for now, I firmly believe that the land we see on this map really never existed. I've just launched a new YouTube channel called Space and Planet, which focuses on Earth and space science news, as well as independent scientific research from around the world. Please subscribe now to give my new channel a head start, I have placed a link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.